Hi, I'm Amy Hannon and nothing thrills me more than people and food. I'm a preacher's wife, a mom of three, and I own my own specialty kitchen store. I've kept an open door and a well-stocked fridge, which means I have fed a lot of mouths over the years. So welcome to my kitchen. This is Cooking Today. Hi, welcome to Cooking Today. I am so glad that you're here. I'm glad that you're here. Thanks. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> this is my friend Beth, and y'all, we can laugh more than anybody mm -hmm. else, and we've already laughed and laughed and laughed this morning, and so just bear with us. We have a really good time together. Beth's my friend from college, which was not so very long ago. Shh, I was saying not, not that many. long ago. It was not mm -hmm. that long ago, and y'all, we kind of lost touch a little bit. Sorry about that. Oh, it was probably me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it was, yeah. it was Beth's yeah. fault. And we kind of lost touch, and then they moved their daughter into our school district and all this, and it kind of brought us all back full circle, which has been super fun. It has been fun. And, I mean, I think so. Yeah. Okay. It's been fun. And she has a daughter that's a senior with Luke, and Beth works at Unime. So y'all have seen her. If y'all been in Unime, she's there a lot. She's been there from the beginning. And um, we hang out, and we love to bake, and we text a lot about cooking. We do. A lot about food. We a lot of our friendship is built on food. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and we true. love cookbooks. We do. When we get cookbooks in at Unimaze, mm -hmm. we're the first two to like drool and look and go on and on about the pictures. For sure. So anyway, Beth is a really good friend. She helps me be creative when my brain's tired. And so she's really fun. You're a good sounding board. Thank you. I've always said that. Thank you. Beth has some brownies that I really love. We've made brownies. We've made brownies on here before. I don't know if you saw that one, but mm -hmm. we did like a peppermint cream cheese frosting. And I went on this whole big long thing about how Sam likes cakey brownies and I like yes. fudgy brownies and we kind of found a mix. These are straight up without a doubt fudgy. They are very fudgy. Like almost mm. like the batter. Would you say? Yeah. Yeah. They they stay a little more moist than They are moist. There's a lot of brownie. oil in them. Do you think it's the oil? And the, you don't have to and you don't have to grimace about oil here. Oh, it's, it's the weird. Oil. It's the oil. Mm, yeah. It's delicious. It's a lot. There's a lot of Beth oil. Beth is going to start. We're going to start mixing these recipes up. They are easy, easy, easy. And we're going to do brownies today. Beth's yummy brownies. And we're going to make a no churn ice cream that you can make at home really, really easy to put with your brownies. If you're going out on the lake for the weekend or picnicking or whatever, then you can just pay, you know, take both of these with you on your little family thing or make them for a little birthday party or whatever. Just an easy little summertime treat. Okay, brownies. There's not a ton to say about brownies, <laughs> except the ingredients. And then yes. this is a fun story about where she got these. So what do we need to start with? You said you know this by heart. So yes. you better not clam up. Okay. Um, it's, we start with a cup and a half of flour. Okay, cup and a half of flour. Yeah. And, and Beth said that we just put, you want to grab the, you can grab the sugar. Yeah. Beth says that we just put all the ingredients in at one time. You know, brownie batter is a little bit different than a cake batter. So, you know, cake batter, you kind of do, I don't know, wet, dry, alternate, yeah. and all that kind of stuff, but not I this. I just put it all in there. Okay. Tell me, tell me what. So, a cup and a half of flour. Here, you want to do it? Sure. There's a half cup. You could do three. Okay. I'll move this. Okay. And then two cups of sugar. Okay, do you need to count one? Oh, yeah, I better pay attention. I know. Please pay attention. Two. <laughs> That time Selena was on here, she had to do that nine times. I would have. Beth that is friends up. with my British yes. friend Selena, and we we all you put the three her of us in a room together. So good. I love her cookies. I know. Okay. Okay. So that was what a cup and a half that of was sugar. A cup and a half of flour. I mean flour. Mm -hmm. Flour, not sugar. And it's all purpose. So just you know, get the regular. And then two cups of sugar. I'm just gonna shake that off. Nobody's gonna care, right? Two cups. So it's four of these. Yes. Can you can you can you do that and then talk about? You got the recipe? Um, yes, I think I can count. I'll do it. Yeah, you count. You keep going. Um, so my mom had a friend when I was growing up, okay. um, and she was a great cook, mm -hmm. for sure. And she, as a wedding gift, gave me all of her recipes. She had handwritten them and put them in a um, recipe box, and that was her gift to me when we got married. And the, the coolest thing that she did is all of the recipes that my mom had ever given to her that my mom had handwritten, <gasps> she, she included them. She included my mom's in there. Like she gave those to me, which was so sweet. Those are the best gifts. Yeah. It's one of my favorite things in Unime. It's like some ladies will come in. What else do we need to put in? I can keep talking. But. Oh, and a cup of oil. A cup of oil. 
There are ladies who will come in and they'll buy like a recipe box or yeah, just keep going. Okay, I'm gonna look behind you. What do you need? Um, I need four tablespoons of cocoa. Oh yeah, four tablespoons of cocoa. Mm -hmm. Who come into Unimates and they buy like a little recipe binder or these um, recipe books. A lot of times we've seen like moms or grandmothers or n brand new, like a lady who's about to be a new mother-in-law and they come in and they transcribe over in their handwriting the recipes. And I just think that is such a gift. It is very sweet. It is. And, and I'll always remember that it came from her. And she wrote little notes on each recipe like, this is great for a big group. This is good. And when you're a new bride, and I had never cooked before. Sure. Um, I had no idea what I was doing. And Did you move straight out of a sorority house to, to being a wife? Um, I, what, I wasn't in a sorority house, but yeah, from like a... I was still in college when we yeah, got married. Yeah, I was too. So, yeah, I knew. Oh my gosh, this is a fun fact. We got married on the same day in the same year. We did. And we shared a friend, Shannon Lowe. Sorry. She, she picked wedding. her wedding. She, she didn't did. Come to mine, but they had been lifelong friends, and Beth, we were. I was a new. I've friend known her forever. You, yeah. yeah, and it was you a hard win. choice. You win. That's it's. That was a legit choice, Shannon. Yeah. Not, that was a good choice. Sorry, Shannon. Okay, adding salt. Um, a teaspoon of salt. There's quite a bit of salt. I love that. Um, we're gonna add in a little bit of vanilla. Yep, two teaspoons of vanilla. Yeah. And then that's and it. Four eggs. We have a oh, day. Oh, eggs. <laughs> all come back. four eggs. Yeah. Now we need all those. Delicious. It's gonna be good. Super easy. We'll be back. Come back and see us. Cooking Today, sponsored by West Rock Coffee Company. Hi, welcome back to Cooking Today. I have got my friend Beth in here, and we are making her brownies that your friend, my mom's friend, gave to me as a wedding gift. She gave me recipes. And I <laughs> love these. Now, I don't know if you remember, we've talked about this before. Okay, I'll tell you my story in a second. Let's go ahead. Beth's already cracked four eggs beautifully. Thank you. I might add. Yeah. And then we went ahead and we added in, we were adding in the vanilla, we did the salt, the cocoa powder, all that. And you just put it all in at one time and then go. Maybe we did need that. The little shield. <laughs> the little shield. That's just part of a kitchen. Yeah. Always has a little layer. How long do you think you do this? Is it one of those where you just do it till it incorporates? Just, kind of, or? just watch. Till it turns a really pretty light milky chocolate brown. Okay. That is totally different than all of my brownie recipes. Mm -hmm. Why is it light like that? I think the cocoa. <laughs> but I mean, all <laughs> I mean, but I think it's, it's not like bittersweet chocolate, that dark chocolate that you're putting in there, maybe? I don't know. I don't know. I'm I not actually a... asked her if it had brown sugar in it because it's they're real sugary and they're even a little bit grainy, but good grainy, if that makes sense at all. Does that make sense? Yes. She always called them barely chocolate brownies, but I don't. Maybe it's that there's not a lot. Yeah. Okay, that's good. That's a good answer. That sounds better it than It sounds better cocoa. than cocoa. Because all brownies have cocoa. But they're a beautiful, like a milk chocolate color. And they are fudgy. So if you guys like, if you're in the camp of fudgy over cakey brownies, you are going to love these. Because I am a fudgy brownie girl. Remember? I had that big long story about Sam and how he <laughs> likes cakey brownies and it was, you know, kind of a war of the worlds. Ugh, it almost looks like cake batter. It's thin. It is. It's really good. I'm going to keep going. Maybe for um, just a second. This is in my, this is 100% in my camp. Like Sam thinks they're good because they're chocolate. Don't, this will hurt your feelings. You yeah. don't care. He likes those gluten free ones that were cakey. They were like hockey pucks. They were hockey pucks, but he likes that. He likes <clears> that they're really, really dry. These are like wet and gushy. You know, people will do like, um, I have a friend in Fayetteville, Kathy, that loves to put cookie dough in the mic like in a cup in a microwave and just melt it. Have you ever done that? Cookie dough in the microwave? And melt it? And just I've never done it. that. But I'll try it. <laughs> <laughs> so this is kind of along those lines. Oh, y'all, they're so delicious. So delicious. Okay. And you said that you have a, help, a fudge sauce recipe. I do. We're not going to have time to make it today, but I might put it on the website. Yeah, it's really good. Is it something that you have to make on the stove and like melt things? No, in actually or? you make it um, in the microwave. You just Easy. kind of um, mix several things and melt them and it keeps for weeks in the refrigerator. Oh, we need to be sure to remind me because you know I have to have the help. Yes. Um, remind me and we will include that in case you're in the mood to make a fudge sauce on top of your fudgy brownies. Okay, are you gross? Your fingers I'm, are gross. I'm a little... We are going to wipe Beth's fingers. <laughs> Here, with uh, this. Thank and you. then I'm going to use my Baker's Joy. You know how we feel about Baker's Joy? It has flour in it. We toot this horn all day long at Unimays. That it is the best. And we're going to put it in our pretty turquoise Fiesta Baker. 
I think I just sprayed my feet with this. And you know, you wanna spray your pan over your sink because of all that little extra spray. If you do it on your floor or your tile, you're a goner. Can you do it? It might take us both. I swear I have Baker's arthritis. <laughs> you know how people have tennis elbow? <laughs> you have cooking shoulder? <laughs> shoulder, yeah. Because this is a heavy bowl. So. I know. So we're just gonna scrape. And we talked about this in the commercial, but we wanna be sure to let y'all know. We transferred over to like a bowl scraper because your mixer doesn't always get down deep inside there. And since Beth made a good point, since we didn't kind of mix, incorporate, mix, incorporate, mix, incorporate. Oh, it smells really good. I dare you to lick this right in the sink. I'm kidding. Don't, I would not do that to you. Don't. <laughs> I wouldn't I'll do totally it. do that. I wouldn't do it. On, I wouldn't do it. Um, we gotta have dignity. Right. We're gonna save it. I'm yeah, gonna save that. That's so good. That's got Timmy's name written all over it, doesn't it? it does. Um, okay. So you want to spray this. You want to get your bowl scraper down inside the bottom of that mixing bowl because there's just stuff that kind of settles down in there since we didn't do the alternating incorporating. We just put it all in. So Beth got her arm in there and really kind of picked that up and, um, you know, stirred it around. Ooh, it's got a pretty little swirl. Did you mean to do that? I totally did that on purpose. I bet. Okay, we have a 350 degree oven. These bake for 32 minutes. 32 minutes. And you know what I always say on that is, where's my timer? I got it. That you don't want to just set a timer and walk away because my time versus right. her time versus whatever, your time may be completely different. And if we walked away and burned the brownies, we would all be cry. Sorry. Okay, I'm going to set them for 30. Is that okay? Sure. Now, here's a question. You know, when you do like a cakey brownie, you can insert the tester. Mm -hmm. These are not going to come out clean, are they? Um, you you can still tell. I mean, it's not it's not doughy, so it's not doughy. Mm -mm. Okay, probably look nice and um, cooked around the outsides. I would guess. Yes, the and edges do look a little bit dried out mm -hmm. or whatever. But you don't want to overcook them, and you're going to want to definitely let them cool before you cut them because otherwise yes, you wouldn't be able to it's cut a mess, them. Right. Okay. We are going to make homemade no-churn ice cream. Easy vanilla creamy yeah. yumminess. When we get back, we will put it all together. This is Cooking Today. Ice tea, sponsored by Lipton. What I love most about the farmer's market is the music, the arts, the food, the people themselves. Uh, that's local. That's Fayetteville. Local means homegrown. My kids can run around. They can choose what she wants to get and eat. I like growing and selling directly to the public. And the market is kind of what community ought to be. Visit us Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday on the square. The Fable Farmer's Market. 100% local and love. Hi, welcome back to Cooking Today. I've got my friend Beth with me today. This is fun, huh? It is fun. You're doing good. <laughs> Y'all, everybody we've ever had that I've invited to come on and hang out with me is usually either a really good friend or family, and everybody is super nervous, but... I think you're doing nice. A nice job. Thank you. I told her if she stopped talking, I was going to stomp her toes while I'm like under here. I'm talking. <laughs> talking. Don't like me. the way you would spur a horse. You're like, come on now. You're doing good. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> My turn. We're going to teach you how to make homemade, no churn vanilla ice cream. I have a great granny that used to say churn. The churn. <laughs> get the churn. Go get the churn. <laughs> yeah. Go get the churn. Do y'all people like that in your family? I do. Madison County. Home of the great grandmothers that say churn. I swear everybody watching this show right now has somebody in their family that says that. Yeah, Arkansas. So we, we say churn. We say churn. Okay, <clears throat> not no churn ice cream like no children can eat it, but no churn. We're gonna. It's easy. This is easy, and we're gonna make this in our mixer. You know, our stand mixer. If you do not have a stand mixer, you can use a hand mixer. I mm -hmm. used a hand mixer at Best the other night to whip cream. For what did I bring? We were making whipped cream. No, what? what did I put it on? Something. Oh, strawberries. And, oh, strawberries um, and biscuits. biscuits. Yeah. yeah. They were good. So you can do, they were all right. It wasn't my best work. But you're sweet. It was good. I mean, you know, we never say no thank you to dessert, even if it's not like, great. They were, I ate it all. I did too. Okay, you can pop that down and lock it. So then, pop it and lock it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So. 
we are basically making sweet whipped cream, which we've done before here. We have two cups, which is a pint, that little, four, you know, little pint-sized carton. And to this, we are going to add a couple of heaping tablespoons of powdered sugar, just to give it a little bit of sweet. Y'all, this is so easy. It's like four ingredients to make homemade ice cream. That's awesome. I don't have an ice cream maker. You said you do. Yes, Shoot. but it's still a pain to get out. Did I do two or three? I did two. I did two. Yeah. And I did heaping, so I think we're good. It is a pain to get out. I have when we first got married, but it's not in the box in the garage. And I think we sold yeah. it in the garage sale. Sorry, sorry if you bought that for me for my wedding. Well, this is a we great idea. For it. This you is can just great. do it any day. Any day. So, we're going to whip that. You can turn that up just a little bit. And then, once this gets to, like, hard, the harder piece, like a really nice, firm cream, then we're going to take it out of here and we're going to fold in a can of sweetened condensed milk. And this is the four, like a 14, yeah, 14 ounce can. All things with sweetened condensed milk. Yum. I feel like we could do like a whole day on our love for sweetened condensed milk. It's delicious. I told Beth if y'all weren't here, I'd lick that. It's so good. It's delicious. Here, you think you can get that to the trash without, yep. Okay, so I've got one more, one more. And we want this to become, get stiff peaks. And what stiff peaks means is if we were to lift that up. Do you know what stiff peaks means? Mm -hmm. yeah, I figured you did. If we were to lift this up and like pull that beater out and like it's upside down like this, if we were to turn it and hold it up like this, that little point, you know, the little point would stand upright. If you're making a recipe that says soft peaks, then you would, you know, lift your beater out and turn it up and that little point that comes on the top would fold over. Does that make sense? So that should help you a lot in your baking if you're mixing like this and you don't really know the difference between stiff peaks and soft peaks. So we're gonna do this, and then what I thought would be really, really fun, since it's kind of, you know, we're moving into summer, like official summer, I bought, aren't these cute? They're I really love cute. that little pattern. Mm -hmm. I would love these for a little juice class. For sure. These are freezer safe jars that I just got at the grocery, like in a little case. Um, they're freezer safe. That's super important because you know not all glass can go yeah, in the freezer. Yeah, don't want it And it would break. So I did these little guys with the lids, and we've been loosening the lids. Yeah, you can do that. And what I thought would be really fun is to put our ice cream down inside these jars and leave a little bit of headroom so that if you wanted to take these to the lake or to the picnic, you can pack these in a cooler so since they're glass. You can even put them on ice mm -hmm. to keep them cold. And if you leave just enough peppering, we could, I was thinking we could like cut the brownies into small squares. Yeah. Do you know what would be real cute? I don't know if these brownies would hold up. It'd be really cute if you had a little round cutter. Yes, it would. And you could put a little round brownie, just almost like top these little glasses mm -hmm. with a little brownie. You could like brownie parfait. Oh, we could a brownie parfait. That would be good. So all kinds of little fun things you can do with these jars. And I like the portability of it that you can, you know, take them to the lake or whatever. Okay, I think we're getting good. Yeah, what do you think? I think that's good. Yeah, I think that looks great. So now all we're gonna do, yeah, it just stays really nice and firm. Just pop that out. This always is so heavy. I love ice cream more than probably anything else. More than the brownies. Sorry, I know. My favorite bite is the brownie and the ice cream. I agree, so that's, meat. That's the best bite of yeah, dessert ever. I agree with you. Okay, I'm going to stir this in. This is how easy this is. Add in a little bit of vanilla. You'll get the recipe on our blog. Fold it and spoon it in there and freeze it overnight. That is all there is to the most delicious homemade creamy ice cream ever. So I'm going to work on this. We're going to put them in these neat jars. we check on brownies. We'll be back. This is cooking today. So we can just pretend like we're cooking in your kitchen. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with an audience. That's what we are doing in my kitchen. You're cooking okay. in my kitchen. But we, okay. I didn't mean, yeah. <gasps> I know! I know, it's science. But don't do it to me. <laughs> I cracked your egg. Cracked my egg. No, I didn't mean to oh. do it again. I meant open it. <laughs> you were out of control. I should have never shown you that. Hi, we're back. We're wrapping up Beth's beautiful brownie recipe today. I love it. Look at this color. That's the color. I think it's so pretty. 
They're lighter. They smell so good. I just want to eat them. We want to eat them. And they've pulled away like so beautifully. We've kind of peeked in there and looked at all the places where it's kind of pulled away and it's gotten so good. So let me tell you what we've done. Beth, you want to try to cut these? Sure. Okay. Um, it's your recipe, surely. Oh, yes. Ooh, they, they did cut clean. Yeah. I doubted you. I did. I doubted. We haven't pulled one out yet, so. Okay, we'll see them better. Yeah. They're brownies. They can just taste good. What we did, I took that ice cream that we just mixed the whipping cream and the sweetener, and then we added in the, we just kind of carefully folded in the sweetened condensed milk, and then um, added in a little vanilla and folded it. And then I just carefully, and Beth and I did this together, just dropped it down into these little glass jars that are freezer safe. It's important that you get freezer safe. Mm, I see the one I want. And when, they get messy. Like it kind of drops around the outsides, and so you just have to take a paper towel and kind of wipe it off. And then I just kind of gave it a little shimmy so that it would kind of set down in there. And then all, oh, and then we put sprinkles on top. I thought that would be really fun for the kids. So we, all you need to do with these is put the lids on them and freeze them overnight. Piece of cake. And then Beth has the ones that have frozen. We did these the night before. And so we've done, look how pretty, like real ice cream. Smell it. Oh, it's so good. And we've got our spoons out. I'm and excited. I've got Beth showing you here how that you can do a bowl full of ice and just nestle these right down inside. Just like that and keep them nice and cool and ready to serve. Put a brownie right on the side of that. You've got ice cream and brownies for the weekend. I'm ready. Let's eat them. For sure. Thanks for coming. Thank you. These are wonderful. Y'all need to try the best fudgy brownies you've ever had. This is Cooking Today. Cooking Today, sponsored by West Rock Coffee Company. Kitchenware is provided by Una Mays. Groceries provided by Harps, hometown fresh. Online elements sponsored by Fayetteville Farmers Market.